What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to debug Python code in the command line using a core Python tool called PDB. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about PDB in this video today, which is a command line tool for debugging Python code, quite similar to GDB. For those of you who don't know what GDB is, it's a command line tool for debugging applications in general, oftentimes used to debug C code or assembly code. And PDB is, you could say, the Python version of that. It's part of the core Python stack. So when you have Python installed, you also have PDB installed. Uh, it's the Python debugger, so to say, in the command line. And in today's video, we're going to learn how to use it and what it can do for us. This is going to be particularly interesting to those of you guys who have a lightweight coding setup or who prefer to have a lightweight coding setup. Maybe you use Vim or NeoVim or some basic editor that does not support debugging features. Or maybe you just prefer to use the command line in general, you prefer to have commands instead of using the mouse to click on step over step into and stuff like that. Maybe you just prefer this interface. And for those of you guys, this is going to be particularly interesting because that might give you a feeling of more control or more overview while doing the debugging. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write some basic Python code, we're going to uh, add something that can produce problems, and then we're going to go through the debugging process. Now for beginners, if you don't know what debugging is, if you have never debugged code, if you want to learn about debugging in general, I have a video on how to do debugging in PyCharm. I think for a beginner, using a graphical user interface is going to be more intuitive. This is probably more for those kind of people that already know what debugging is and prefer to have this command based approach. So I'm going to write the code here on the Windows subsystem for Linux just because I prefer my NeoVim installation here, but I'm going to run the debugging on my Windows command line on CMD. It doesn't really matter since Python is platform independent and PDB is part of the core Python stack. You can use it on Linux, you can use it on Mac, you can use it on Windows, it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and say we want to have a new file main.py and I'm going to write some basic code here. Let's say we have a list of values 10, 6, 17, 5, 14, 18, 85, 0, 9, 12, 13, or something like that. Um, and what we want to do now is we want to iterate over this list, we want to say for value in values. And we want to print the result of a division 10 divided by value. And of course, this is going to produce a problem as you can see, because we have a zero here. So this is going to raise a zero division error once we reach the zero. And uh, of course, we can see this here with our eyes and with our brain, but sometimes you're going to have some errors, which you cannot find that easily. So you need to do some debugging. And this is what we're going to do here. So let's also add a simple if statement, let's say if the value is divisible by five, in this case, we're just going to print divisible by five, just so that we have some branches to interact with some points to jump to. And we're going to say print hello world to have a generic message in the end here as well. So this is the basic code. And now we can do the debugging, we don't have any breakpoints here, what we can do is we can open up a new terminal, I'm going to just split the terminal here and have my Windows command line down below, I'm going to navigate to that directory where my code is, and I'm going to run the following command Python, in your case, Python or Python three, depending on the operating system, depending on the installation on Linux, oftentimes, it's Python three instead of Python, then dash M, then PDB, and then the script main PY. This opens up the debugging tool. And uh, now we can just execute the basic debugging commands that we also know from graphical user interfaces, we can step into we can step over, we can continue, we can jump to certain lines, we can set breakpoints and stuff like that. Now, in this case, we don't have any breakpoints. So right now, let's say I want to have a breakpoint at this line here at print 10 divided by value, which is line four. So what I can do here is I can just say break, and then four, and this is going to set the breakpoint one at line four, which is this one. And now if I say C for continue, you can also of course say continue, but just C is enough because it does continue. You can see now it's at line four, it stopped. And now I can print, for example, the value of value, I can just use the P command to display the value of a certain variable. In this case, I can just say value. And you can see that the current value of value is 10. Uh, I think this should also work with lists, there you go, P values prints me 
the values uh, in general, and I can do that with all kinds of variables that we have here. Now, if I want to continue, I can just uh, type C again, and it's going to uh, to execute the whole thing. So it's going to just continue to run the code until it reaches that breakpoint again. So you can see it uh, executed this line of code, it printed 1.0 because 10 divided by 10 is one, um, divisible by five as well, because it entered this if statement since 10 is divisible by five, and then also hello world, because that's the last statement, then it started a new iteration. Now we're here again at the breakpoint, and we can print again, the value you're going to see now it's six. So we're not going to get into the if statement. If I type continue, you can see it printed the result and hello world not divisible by five. Um, and this is what we can do here with continue, we can also just step into the next uh, line. So if I want to go to the next line, what I can do is I can say next, which basically will execute the print statement. Uh, and now I'm at the if statement. So you can see here, this is the result of the print statement. Uh, and now it says this is the next command to be executed, I can say next again, it doesn't go inside the if statement because it's not divisible by five. So value modulo five is not zero. Um, so it goes to that statement, I can also say next, or I can also, in general, type step. Now, the difference here is that when I have something, uh, maybe for this, I'm going to quit, we can quit with a Q command. Uh, maybe I want to go into the script here, what I can also do is I can set a breakpoint. So I can set a breakpoint manually in the code. So for example, here, breakpoint, like this, this sets a breakpoint in this line, which basically targets this line. So it's the same as break four uh, that we did before here. Um, and then I can also step and you can see that when I call this function, I do step, it's going to step inside of that function. So let me just write this to a file. Let me run this again. Uh, let me now just continue, you can see it already stopped at print. I can go with continue again. Now it stops at the breakpoint. And if I do, uh, I think now if I do step, uh, actually, is it that if I do step, there you go. So since I did step, um, I now get into the set trace function, I can do step again, I go deeper into the whole function call. Uh, of course, I can just do continue if I do next, this is not going to happen next always goes to the next line. Um, and step goes into the function call. Now what we can also do is we can continue up until a certain line number. So for example, if I remove the breakpoint here, I save the file and I run the debugging. Uh, again, what we can do is we can say run the script until you reach a certain line number. And this basically means if I provide six, and it doesn't reach six, but it reaches seven, it's also going to stop because it basically went over six. So uh, it's going to consider it as uh, I reached six, so it's going to stop anyway. So if I say here until let me just show you if I say until six, uh, it's going to stop here because that's line six. But also if I run this again, and I say next, 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 next. So I skip the first one where I'm going to enter uh, the if statement since 10 is divisible by five. Um, now I'm here again, if I say enter, and I say print the value, you can see it's six, so it shouldn't enter. And if I say until six, it's still going to stop at this hello world statement. Uh, even though it didn't reach line six, it reached line seven. So it's going to consider it until six as well. So hope that makes sense. Um, but that's something that we can do. What we can also do is we can set temporary breakpoints. So let me quit this here again. If I say, for example, I want to have a breakpoint at line six, I can just say break six, or I can say T break six for temporary breakpoint, which basically means there is going to be a breakpoint. But once I reach it, I'm not going to have the breakpoint anymore. So it's only going to be there once. So if I say T break, and I say continue, you can see it stops here. If I say continue again, it doesn't stop anymore. You can see that this is already the exception, it went through all these numbers without stopping. Because once it reaches this uh, line here with a temporary breakpoint, it's going to remove it. Uh, and it's no longer there, you can see the difference when I type break six, and I do continue, then it stops there every time. Right. So that's the difference here. Um, what else can we do? This is quite interesting, we can also jump into specific lines, which basically changes the way the code works. So what I can do here is I can run this. Um, I can say next, 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 by the way, if you just type enter, it's going to execute the last command. So if you type next once, 
and then you do uh, enter, it's going to do next uh, all the time. So let's do it again. And now let's print again value. So it's six right now, it shouldn't go into uh, into the if statement. But if I say jump six, now I'm at this line of code. And if I say print value, you can see it's six. And even though it's six and not divisible by five, it's inside of the if statement because I jumped there manually. You can also get some more overview over the code that you're currently looking at by just typing L. L is basically uh, basically listing the code that you're working with. You can see right now we're at line six, which is print divisible by five, but you can again see that the value is six. So we manually jumped into that. Um, and that's basically how you do the debugging, right? So you can you can play around in, in a particular scenario, this would be uh, running this file would just re uh, produce a zero division error. Maybe I don't know why this is happening. I don't understand it. So I can just call the debugger. And I can say, okay, um, I want to do uh, what lines this uh, coming in line four. So I want to set a breakpoint at line four. And then I want to continue, 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 continue. Then I see, okay, there's a zero division error after this statement after this 0117 divisible by five. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit, run this again, set the same breakpoint, continue, 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 continue. So that's uh, where it doesn't work. Now let's see what the current value is print value, it's zero. Okay, so the exception occurs when the value is zero. So that might be the problem. Then if I do next, you can see it causes the zero division error. And this is how you do the basic debugging. Of course, this is a trivial example. But that is how you do that in the command line. And there are, of course, some more advanced commands as well. You can say, okay, run until the function returns run until this and that happens run until this condition is met and stuff like that. Uh, you can play around with that it gives you more control. But of course, it's also less intuitive, because it's not a graphical user interface. But especially if you're a command line heavy person, if you're someone who uses Vim, NeoVim, you might prefer this way of debugging your Python code over the graphical user interface. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.